Now, Africa's most awarded station, Channels Television, and leading international broadcaster, Voice of America, have been enumerating their plans to extend their partnership in the area of content production and capacity building in Nigeria and the African continent. The plan was announced during a visit to Channels Television office in Abuja by the Chief Executive of Voice of America, Mrs. Amanda Bennett. Mrs. Bennett, a renowned journalist and author and two-time Pulitzer Prize winner, was accompanied on the visit by VOA's Director in Charge of Africa, Mr. Neguzie Mengesha. Our correspondent, Terry Ikumi, reports. Officials of the Voice of America arriving at Channel's Television Regional Headquarters in Abuja. On hand to receive the delegation is the chairman of Channel's Media Group, Mr. John Momo. The purpose of the visit is to strengthen and explore new areas of partnership between Channels TV and The Voice of America. The show that we're developing as a result of that is unique in, in the African market, maybe unique in most of the global market. It's going to be called Our Voices, and it's going to be a half-hour news and information program that's moderated by four women. So it will have four women anchors, that one, one from south, southern part of Africa, one east, one west, and one central. And they'll be talking about not just women's issues. As a matter of fact, women's issues will probably be the minority. It will be the issues facing everyone in the country. Before the election comes, if the campaign starts, maybe we can think of co-production, organizing debates. Uh, even in, not only in English, in Hausa also, in the Northern State. The chairman highlights Channels TV's development plans and its preparedness to work with the Voice of America. Mm -hmm. We'll be interested in our voices. Mm -hmm. I think it sounds like a, uh, one that uh, will hit a home run here in, uh, in, yeah. in Nigeria. We've been in, uh, in existence for 22 years as, as a news concern, news and current affairs concern, and at this time we're trying to diversify. Both parties exchange gifts, and the visitors are taken on a tour of the facilities at the station. Afterwards, both parties explain the outcome and importance of the visit. We produce English language programming and we have many other programs we'd like to, to do that we think channels would be interested in, in giving to the Nigerian people in English. And we know that channels is interested in uh, expanding its business. You have, a, you have a really beautiful facility that's well equipped to do some of the most modern production. Because of the kind of relationship we have with Voice of America, um, they've been our partner in progress and we think that uh, working with them and making sure that this comes about is, uh, is an obrea and something that will help. Uh, so um, we're very happy and delighted that uh, they have decided that they're going to come along with us in making sure that this becomes a reality. The partnership between The Voice of America and Channels Television seeks to improve broadcast content in Nigeria, which also includes the training of Nigerian journalists at the Channels Academy. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. The Acting Deputy Chief of Mission at the United States Embassy, Mr. Aruna Amitanayagam, is conversing the support of Nigerians at all levels in reporting suspected cases of human trafficking. According to the diplomat, this will reduce the cases of persons trafficked both within and outside the shores of the country. He was speaking at a gathering organized by the United States Embassy to mark the International Day Against Human Trafficking in Abuja. Statistics from the International Labour Organization shows that an estimated 24.9 million victims are trapped in human trafficking. Out of these numbers, 16 million are exploited for labor, 4.6 million for sexual exploitation, and another 4.1 million are exploited for state-imposed forced labor. Out of these statistics, Africa's share of global statistics for human trafficking is pulled at 5.7 million. 
As part of the event to raise awareness of the dangers associated with human trafficking, the United States Embassy engaged some Nigerians at a forum, challenging them to speak out against the heinous crime. 71% of trafficking victims around the world are women and girls, and 29% are men and boys. And we will hear from our panel today that human trafficking does not always involve travel to the destination of exploitation and that trafficking can happen in the person's country of birth. Speakers at the event share their thoughts on why they are motivated to reduce the number of trafficked persons. In the street, there are a lot of stories, not in the office. As a psychologist, I could just like a lecture at the Federal Polytechnic Dermatro. That was when my thirst to help trafficked victims began. To commemorate the International Day Against Trafficking in Persons, officials of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons launched an iReport platform to serve as medium for reporting all suspected cases of human trafficking. The development of the platform was informed by the dire need to scale up the visibility of the agency, enhance seamless and prompt reportage of issues relating to human trafficking as well as increased mutual participation and interaction of the general public in human trafficking matters. Over 359 convictions have so far been achieved by NAFTIV officials since inception. But with more vigilance, dedication and support of Nigerians, officials say more could be done in the days ahead. Meanwhile, as part of the efforts in tackling the menace of human trafficking, the European Union says it plans to rehabilitate the communities in Edo State mostly affected by the scourge. The deputy head of delegation of the EU in Nigeria, Richard Young, confirmed this to journalists after a forum held in Benin City to examine the root causes of human trafficking. On his part, the Edo State Governor Godwin Albaseki has described the number of Edo youths trapped in Libya as alarming and called for urgent intervention. We're working very closely with uh, them and with the World Bank to look at what we can do in training programs, also with the GIZ and how we can strengthen those training programs to help people to become better skilled. We're also looking very, very carefully at what we can do in tackling trafficking and smuggling of people by looking at what we can do to protect people, prosecute people and build partnership with law enforcement agencies so we can break up the criminal networks that exist there. There are about 56,000 Nigerians in Libya as we speak waiting to cross over to Europe. And of those, you know, if for every, you know, every con um, batch of, of um, you know, migrants or irregular migrants, the majority are usually Edo's. So at a minimum, you have about 30,000, you know, Edo people in Libya stuck. I mean, that's, that, if that's not a crisis, what is a crisis? This is, these are those ones who are formally documented. We're not talking about the ones who haven't showed up for documentation or the ones that died on the way. So if we are losing these numbers of, you know, young, able-bodied people from Edo as a result of migration, then we must all, you know, wake up to the fact that we need to do something urgent and something serious about it. And that's all from Abuja. Back to you, Melinda. Many thanks, Linda. Out to some other stories now. News coming from Ondo State says the former chairman of Akure North local government area, Dele Faguriola, who was abducted by armed bandits on Saturday, has been released. An elder brother of the victim told Channels Television that he was released on the same spot he was abducted from. He added that the ransom was paid for the release but did not disclose the amount and how it was paid. The spokesperson of the Ondo State Police Command, Mr. Femi Joseph, says the police is still investigating the circumstances surrounding the incident in order to apprehend the perpetrators. From Ondo, we move to Ogun State, where public servants have been commended for their dedication to work and contribution to the development of the state. The governor, Ibikune Amosu, made the commendation at the 2018 Public Service Day Symposium at the June 12th Cultural Center in Abeokuta, the state capital. He also wants them to keep believing in the current administration, as its mission to rebuild the state is yielding results.
The governor of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, has set aside the sum of 50 million naira to boost the State Broadcasting Service Film Academy in the area of film production. The governor mentioned this during the graduation ceremony of the pioneer students of the ABS Film Academy in Orca, the state capital. The 27 graduating students were trained in various courses, including directing, film production, broadcast journalism, script writing, amongst others. The Anambra Broadcasting Service Film Academy has recorded its first set of graduates. I don't know because the Film Academy, an initiative of the state-owned television outfit, started in March this year with 35 students who were taken through a three-month training course in filmmaking, broadcast journalism, script writing, cinematography, makeup, special effects, among others. The managing director of the station tells us more. The courses are designed to teach the students practical skills that they can deploy in set up their own creative enterprises or finding employment in the fast growing and lucrative creative economy. We model the academy after the New York Film Academy. For some of us that know the uh, New York Film Academy, locally here in Nigeria, you can think of the NTA Television College in Jos and of course the Channels Academy in Lagos. The course facilitators are sourced from both in house within ABS. And outside. A veteran in the game sees the initiative as the creation of an economic hub through the creative industry. When you now come out and join the movie industry, that is when you find out how far you can go. You have got the rudimentary knowledge, it is going to help you. By the grace of God, I intend to have cause be floating around here so that if you are doing any production, I'd like to help out. Seeing the first fruits from this academy must have spurred the governor, Willie Obiana, to make this announcement and charge to the graduates. So it's important to show courage. That kind of spirit is what will take you anywhere in the world. We've been a power today and it is left for us to take it beyond the limit. The governor talks to the managing director of ABS to work with the Ministry of Diaspora Affairs, Indigenous Artwork, Culture and Tourism to establish shooting locations and movie villages in the state so as to accelerate the development in the entertainment industry in Anambra State.